So let me just remind you what we have talked about uh, last time. So this is the shortest possible summary of what we covered last week. So last week, we covered work and energy. And really, the important part here is energy. And work is important only to the extent that however much work you are doing on something relates to change of energy. So we define the work as force that product with displacement. Remember, um, you know, if, you, if this doesn't sound familiar, then review to see what this that product means. Um, in your lab, it had to do something to do with are you doing positive work or negative work, and actually being able to calculate the amount of work done. And the reason the work is important in the context of what we are talking about is however much work you are doing, it relates to change of energy. Um, so all work, whether it's conservative force that you're doing work, or if it's uh, uh, or any kind of force, non-conservative force like apply the force. When I do work on this cart, then I'm putting energy into that cart. So, so that was the beginning point. And we talk about, when we talk about energy, we had a bunch of energy formulas. So those are, um, so this starts the list of formulas that I want you to memorize. So, so far, the only things that I was expecting you to memorize was sort of definitions and how to solve problems. The small set of quote unquote formulas that I wanted you to memorize were kinematics formulas. And now we are adding these to the list, energy formulas. You have energies, energy formula for kinetic energy that's given by one half mass times the speed squared. Um, with the kinetic energy, you could almost take this to be the definition, but uh, it's not quite. When you go to physics 4C, um, how we express kinetic energy will change. But until then, you can take this to be kinetic energy. That's fine. Um, and we had a bunch of potential energy formulas that, that was derived using this and this relationship that potential energy is always due to a conservative force. If the uh, force is not conservative, then you can't define a potential energy. That's equal to negative work done by conservative force. So we derived the two potential energy formulas, starting with this, that was um, gravitational potential energy equal to mass times g times h, or change in height. And spring potential energy um, given by 1 half times the spring constant k times some displacement from equilibrium squared. And so far, we haven't done much with these formulas yet. You got, we looked at one situation at the end of class on Thursday that, um, that was my justification for how I'm going to be treating combination of spring and gravitational potential energy in this class. But we haven't done much with these formulas yet. It's because I'm putting all the problem solving to the very end. Um, so you know, there are some questions that we can answer using just energy conservation. But there's going to be a second set of conservation laws that, um, that I want you to know that will expand the range of problems that we can solve. So we are going to spend time introducing that today. And so, you know, momentum, that's the second set of things that's been conserved. Once we have introduced that and you know all the conservation laws, then we have almost a full week dedicated to nothing but solving problems using conservation laws. That's the rest of this week. And if you look at the syllabus, I think next Tuesday is also um, conservation law problem solving continued. 